that didn't happen. This is too small a stack for this to have happened, so we're gonna pretend it didn't. Hey guys, it's Whitney. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a little bit too long for me to have been away in my opinion, but I'm back with something really fun. So today I'm gonna be talking about my Read Your Gaze Readathon TBR. This was a readathon created by Boston Reads Books in order to celebrate Pride Month. The readathon takes place from June 3rd to June 10th. So if you guys wanna participate, it's coming soon. Get those TBRs ready. I hope everyone decides to participate. Personally, I read queer books all year round and I seek them out intentionally, but I know that some people maybe need a little bit more of a push or just have a lot of trouble finding them. So I'm gonna share with you my TBR for this readathon so that hopefully you can find some new books to read. So for this readathon, there are six prompts. Uh, each of them has a corresponding theme that you're gonna pick a book for. You know, pretty simple, standard readathon stuff. So the first challenge is red, which is to read a book with a gay character. And for that, I actually chose a manga. So the book that I chose for this is called Our Dreams at Dusk. This is a manga that I have seen floating around for a little while. This is about a boy who I believe transfers schools and he actually ends up being afraid that he has been outed as gay. Originally I didn't actually think I was gonna like the art style just because of the way that the front is. It doesn't necessarily match the inside. It does but it doesn't at the same time. I'm sure if you read manga you'll kind of understand what I mean by that. The art style is actually very very nice and I quite like it just from what I've seen on my flip through but that is the book I'm gonna be reading for the first challenge. The next challenge is Orange, which is to read a book with a lesbian character. And for this, I actually chose another manga. I have a couple more options toward later challenges that do include more female-female pairings and lesbians, bisexual characters, all that good stuff. So you'll see those later on. But for now, I've chosen another manga just because I know Realistically, I'm not gonna be able to read six books in seven days with work and all, it's just not gonna happen. So I've decided to read After Hours, which is a Yuri manga that follows some women in their 20s when they meet at a nightclub and, you know, hit it off kind of thing. I've heard good things from people that I trust who have similar tastes as me. So I feel like I'm actually really gonna like this. The next challenge is yellow, which is read a book with a bisexual character. For this, I have chosen Santa Olivia by Jacqueline Carey. This has been on my shelf for a while and it is one that I really do want to get to, which is why it hasn't been unhauled yet. So this is an adult fantasy. I believe it is actually fantasy and not urban fantasy. It does talk about things that remind me of werewolves, but it also talks about people who have powers, be it genetically manipulated or whatnot. So yeah, if you guys are looking for more bi rep in adult fantasies, maybe check this one out, put it on your list to look into. I know personally, I don't find a lot of them. So I do tend to check them out when I hear about them. The next challenge is green, which is to read a trans plus book. Essentially what has happened here is that Boston has included trans and plus all into one since the books with those types of characters are a lot harder to find than gay and lesbian and even bisexual characters. So for this challenge, you can, you can pick, you can read something with a trans character, with a gender fluid character, with an ace character, with a non-binary character, really just anything that isn't uh, gay, lesbian, or bisexual pretty much. So for this, I decided to choose Dreadnought because I picked this up a long time ago and I haven't gotten to it. I've heard some not so great things about the representation, but that hasn't been a unanimous thing. So I guess I'm gonna read this and see what I think. Maybe try to take both sides into account. But yeah, that's what I chose. This is about a trans superhero. I mean, it's pretty simple. This next challenge is the one where I mentioned that I'll be talking about a bunch of different books with different sexualities included because this challenge is blue, which is basically just to read any book with queer characters. I think it's fair to say that I have a few. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna read all of these, but I wanna talk about them for a minute because I feel like you guys may want some recommendations or need some recommendations for your TBR. So because I have so many, and these are not all of the books that include queer characters on my shelf, these are just the ones that I grabbed. So I'm gonna be kind of quick, I'm just gonna tell you briefly like what sort of representation is in it because a lot of these I don't know about the plot. 
So the first one I have is The Symptoms of Being Human, which is about a gender fluid character. Next I have Tash Hart's Tolstoy, which is a contemporary about an asexual character. After that I have The Abyss Surrounds Us, which is a sci-fi about a, I believe she is a lesbian, and if she's not, um, it has a female female romance in it. Next, there is Ship of Smoke and Steel by Django Wexler, which features a female female romance. Not sure if the character is a lesbian or bisexual, I just know that it has a female female coupling in it. After that, I have Wild Beauty by Anne Marie McLemore. This one was recommended to me because it is about a bisexual main character who ends up with a man, which typically I see bisexual stories where the main character ends up with the same gender in the end. So it's sort of interesting to have a story where they don't end up in a same sex relationship. And the next one I have on my list is a second book in a series, and that is a bad deal for The Whole Galaxy, which is the sequel to A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe by Alex White. Their books are amazing. I might have to pick this one up for that challenge since I've read the first one. I feel like I've talked about these books a lot, but this is a uh, sci-fi story that is just beautiful, is the word that, I, that comes to mind for it. Um, but it does feature a female-female relationship. It's not relationship heavy, which I do appreciate, but it is there for those of you who want that in something uh, that's pretty large as far as the scale of the world and the characters go. So the last challenge is purple, which is to read the group book. And the group book is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. So I'm really excited to pick this book up. This is a YA contemporary featuring a non-binary character, which I don't think I've ever read the perspective of a non-binary character before, so I'm interested to dive into that. This is an own voices novel, so that makes it even better. This book could also work for the challenge Trans Plus, just because you could include this. But as of right now, I've chosen not to combine any challenges just because I don't feel like it. But as the readathon progresses, I might decide to mesh some of these together because some of them will overlap, which is great when you're not on track. So technically, whoa, this is my TBR, which not gonna happen, um, but I do want to read every single one of these books. It's just not gonna happen in the readathon or probably in June itself, but one day, one day. So that is all for today. If you guys are gonna be participating in the Read Your Gaze readathon, please leave me down below some of the books that you plan on reading. And if you are possibly interested in buddy reading something, because I think this particular readathon would be really amazing to do a buddy read with even a bunch of people as opposed to just like one-on-one. -on -one. But I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.